At the turn of the 20th century, a prize trophy salmon weighed more than 70 pounds. Today, fishers celebrate when they land a 30-pounder. In the last 100 years, big Chinook salmon have become an artifact of the past. Smaller Chinook salmon have fewer and smaller eggs. The young salmon that emerge from these eggs don't survive as well either. Why is this happening? While climate change and competition for food influence the size of fish, there's another reason that you might not expect. Fishing. Let's go back to the year 1920. This is Jim. Jim is a salmon fisherman. His specialty is Chinook salmon, the largest, most prized king of salmon. Every morning, Jim wakes up and goes to the river to fish. Sometimes he rows his boat to the ocean, but he can't go very far. And then one day, everything changes. The marine diesel engine arrives in town. Suddenly, Jim can take his boat further than before, and he catches more salmon each day. What Jim doesn't realize is that while he's catching the same species of fish in the ocean, their size and age are different. Some Chinook spend their lives feeding and growing close to the shore along the continental shelf, right where Jim is now fishing. Other salmon generally migrate offshore to grow up in the North Pacific Ocean. So the Chinook Jim is catching in the ocean are immature, and they haven't had time to reach their full size. Many would spend several more seasons or even years growing before returning to the river where Jim once fished. Multiply this effect by thousands of Jims, and you end up influencing evolution. In response to this new evolutionary pressure, fish start maturing at younger ages. In the 1920s, Chinook were up to six years old when they returned to spawn. Today, most Chinook are years younger and are a third of the size. As Chinook keep returning to spawn smaller and younger, killer whales, bears, eagles, people, and even the trees get less and less food. So how can we solve this problem? Instead of fishing in the ocean, we fish in or at the mouth of rivers. This is called terminal fishing, harvesting salmon at the terminus of their migration. Terminal fisheries have been used by indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They were also used by early settlers that came to this land. Fishing closer to the river gives salmon a chance to fully mature in the ocean, helping protect the genes of the oldest and biggest fish. This selective fishing method can also allow the largest females to pass up river to spawn. By shifting our ocean fisheries to terminal locations, we can continue fishing while helping restore the body size of Chinook salmon over time. This will benefit the ecosystems, wildlife, and people that live and work in salmon watersheds. To learn more details about terminal fisheries and how to take action on restoring the size of Chinook salmon, visit www.raincoast.org.